Hello everyone, welcome to another iHuman video. I'm going to walk you through how I handled, I handled the case of VJ Raul. He is a 60 year old male who presents the clinic with a complaint of belly pain. Like any other case, I started by asking history questions, mainly by using the search option. I looked for keywords that directed me to the right questions to ask the patient. I also made a good use of the response given by the simulator after each question I asked the patient. Particularly, I was looking for the good question with the thumbs up sign response to ensure that I was asking the right questions. For example, the good question response after asking the patient if he has any other symptoms we should discuss means that I asked the right question in this case. The simulator highlights this response in green on the section above the head, the patient's head. It is always advisable to conduct research on the patient before starting the case once you have the, re the patient's reason for encounter. This approach helps you get prepared by knowing many things about the case beforehand. The more you know about the case, the less time you'll take handling it and the more marks you're likely to score because you know what you're doing. Remember, the patient's reason for encounter, which was barely pain in this case, is already just a symptom. So you have to ask the right questions regarding the reason for encounter or chief complaint to get the right diagnosis and treatment plan for the patient. Also remember to use the old cats approach to ensure that your history questions cover the onset, location, duration, characteristics, anything that aggravates, relieves, treats, and severity of the reason for encounter or chief complaint. In some cases, the patient has other problems besides the chief complaint. They should be probed using the same approach. The general assumption when handling any human case is that you do not know much about the patient's reason for encounter, even if it is a common cause or a common health issue or problem then you really don't know much about it because it is just a symptom. So you have to ask the patient as many questions as possible regarding that reason for encounter to get a clear picture of what the patient could be suffering from. For example, when I asked the patient if he has taken anything to make the pain in his abdomen better or worse, I'm not only looking for I'm not only looking for if uh, I'm not only inquiring if he has any treatment for this problem, but I'm also trying to look for anything that aggravates or relieves the pain, or even uh, in this case, treating it. So uh, it is also important to ensure that uh, it is also important to, to note that. We depend on the patient's response to these questions. So any question that you ask, you have to look at the response, the patient's response to it to, should guide you to ask more questions. For example, if there's any treatment, if this patient has had any treatment for this, um, for his or her, his problem, then uh, you, you if there's any problem that this patient has taken for his problem, it simply means that it didn't work and that's why he presents to the clinic. So if I ask about how severe the pain is on a scale of one to ten, I'm simply looking for I'm looking to know the severity of the pain. So in this case <coughs> the patient has had this problem for quite some time. And usually the severity is at two to five scale, two to five out of ten on a one to ten scale. But for the last two days, of including the point where this patient is coming to the clinic, he feels that the severity has increased to six to seven out of ten. 
in a 1 to 10 scale so the problem has improved despite taking antiacids to try to relieve the pain or even treat it so it simply means that any treatment he tried on this uh, problem did not work and that's why he presents to the clinic and then uh, it is worth noting that almost all uh, human cases always have question for the review of system which simply means all body systems so if you have a case maybe test or learning mode case that gives you the option ROS all body systems then you have to use it it's like the shortcut of all these systems that is the general constitutional body system skin hair nails e h w e n t press cardiovascular respiratory and the rest so like i said you do not know much about the symptom unless you have the patient as many questions as possible so that you have a clear picture of what you're dealing with again it is always uh, like i said i cannot stress enough that it is always very important to conduct research about the any case that you're supposed to handle so that you have a clear picture of what to expect or what to know or at least have some guide on how to handle a case which is what i did in this uh, case yes so in general i ask about 38 questions out of the 20 limit interactions allowed and i felt believe that the 38 questions had already given me a clear picture of what to expect from this patient or actual the actual problem he is suffering from so the this equation is actually the foundation of the guide for handling any case so for me in this case the 38 questions were enough to give me everything i needed in well, which if i had my research then i knew how to proceed with the case the history section of the a human simulator has four parts which include history questions key findings history notes and the ehr or electronic health record under the key under the key findings you are required to leave the main factors related to the patient's chief complaint and other health problems for example some of the key findings from this case included epigastric or belly pain, black sticky stool, weight loss, heartburn, among others. The key findings are drawn from the patient's response to questions and the assessment of the patient's real, uh, overall health. So like I said, you're supposed to pay attention to every response that the patient gives you. Because it is from the response <coughs> that you get, uh, you do not only get a clear picture, but you get uh, the basis of guide on how to handle the rest of the case. So once you're done with the key findings and you've listed all the what you consider key finding, then uh, you're supposed to move to the next section, which is the EHR or electronic health records. Now usually, or uh, in most cases, you find that the EHR has uh, two options. That is the current visit, the one you're handling currently, and the previous visit. So you're supposed to look at the previous uh, prior visit to just ensure or have some guide because um, the timing of that previous visit is always important. For example, the patient was only uh, was just recently few, a few weeks or a few months uh, in the clinic, so you do not expect much change 
in uh, our brain is our body system especially the ROS so the EHR or health ele uh, electronic health record section provides a chart to be filled using information drawn from the patient response to history questions the EHR has fi five subsections history of present illness or HPI review a review of system or ROS first medical history PMH social history SH and family history FH the HPI is the first part and covers the reason for encounter and history of present illness the ROS is the largest subsection of the EHR and covers all the body systems the remaining parts that is the PMH FH and SH questions are designed to help you get a clear picture of the patient's past medical family and social history some factors about patient history can be the reason for the patient's current health problems for patients with no prior chart consider making more past medical social and other questions that don't you might for a patient with recent previous revisit recorded. For patients with a prior chart, still update allergies, medications, OTC drugs. Update if major change in living situation, death of partner, loss of job, etc. Now in this case, as you can see, you always have to make reference between um, filling in the chart and uh, going back to the history questions which i said is where you get the information to fill the charts with so in some cases um, like i said you have to conduct if you have to carry out prior research and maybe add these things written down or you, which you can also do when asking the questions then you will have not much work when it comes to filling the chart because you can now then just copy and paste what you've already written or use that information to add more information to it to fill these parts now in this case for social history we find that this person this patient drinks about two to three times per week he takes three to five glasses of wine or mixed drinks he also smokes, smokes at least one pack per day uh, now for family history is father is dead mother is overweight and have blood pressure and diabetes yes so after the year <coughs> ehr the next uh, part of history section is the history notes now history notes are written on a chart located under the hx notes section hx being the medical short form for history it is basically the breakdown of all cuts of the patient's chief complaint and other health problems identified through history questions. In this case, the answer of the patient's chief complaint is two to three months ago. Location is abdomen. Duration is two to three months. The characteristics of his problem is sharp and stabbing epigastric pain. There is nothing aggravating it in particular, but taking beer before bed has once acted as a trigger patient has used anti-acids to relieve the pain but that hasn't helped much he also stopped uh, he also hoped that the anti-acid could help with the problem but that failed too according to the patient the pain severity is six to seven on a one to ten scale remember the patient said that Usually the problem is just at 2 to 5, but recently it has increased to at least 6 to 7 on a 1 to 10 scale. So actually that's why you have to visit the clinic. So once you're done with the, your chart, then you can move to the last part of uh, then of, of the history section which in this case simply means moving to the next part and having a go and checking the simulator's response to your work 
in this case I got everything right the next part is the physical exam section in this section I always use the search option to look for the right exact conduct from the patient now you are supposed to understand that this uh, the physical exams have uh, maybe under two categories one there are those common exams that you have to carry out for almost all human patients one of them is auscultation of the lungs which is supposed to carry out for all patients that you come across in any eye human case so usually uh, there is a timer for this section so you're supposed to it it helps guide you uh, rather than just uh, recording the times it also helps guide you on how to on some of these take uh, the exams that you're supposed to carry out one of them being at high skill that requires at least 15 seconds so once you're done uh, you've auscultated all the parts sent by the case then they're supposed to give you an interpretation for both the right and the left lung yes another common physical exam is auscultation of the heart it has at least uh, it has six points that the case requires you to auscultate when conducting this uh, physical exam and then once you're done with the inter with the actual uh, exam you're supposed to give uh, your interpretation of your findings in this case my interpretation was that uh, the patient's heart is normal again auscultation of the abdomen is also a common physical exam that applies to most if not all eye human cases so there are four parts of the abdomen that you're supposed to auscultate and then uh, give your interpretation of your findings in this case my interpretation of the abdomen was no more tensive another physical exam that they took was a visual inspection of extremities visual inspection of the rectal area then that sometimes is common or just specific to a particular case like this section, the physical exam section also has the option of the EHR where like the previous case you're supposed to give or fill a chart using observation of physical exam now in this case I had noted down the findings when carrying those uh, particular exams and I had also carried out uh, some research prior to handling this case and usually when I do that I always pay attention to the EHR because uh, I think uh, it's one of the sections of the eye human that actually takes uh, requires much time so I always have that ready and then uh, if there's any physical or uh, if there's any key finding you find then uh, from this section you can add it and once you're done with that you can look at your feedback uh, look at what you scored right what you missed and just review for maybe uh, improvement in your next assignment and so from this case uh, i did manage to get some right and i also missed a few and then once you're done with that you can move to the next section where you have your key findings so that you can organize them or rank them according to what you think is more important or more serious in this case and then you compare to the feedback from the case findings and then you basically this was a uh, learning mode so you have to give your problem statement which again you get your feedback and try to compare it with what the case has and then because it is learning mode you do not have to do the test rather than the 
tests are done by the case so you just have to look for the interpretation of each test then you move to the proceed to the next section after knowing all that we are required to give you a diagnosis depending on your assessment of the case the test finding the physical exam the history questions and then once you have that and you are convinced the right one you move to the next stage where you get a diagnosis feedback you review it to ensure that you're on the right track or at least know that you've given the right answer then this uh, in this case there was uh, an exercise which had to carry out which had to carry out and then uh, once you get you you are done with the exercise you have to make sure that you are keen read everything make sure you understand it maybe do some research if you are not so sure sometimes uh, the exercise is not actually uh, related to what you've looked before once you have your feedback then you can move to the next which uh, with the second last part of the uh, exercise which is um, a plan and again you have to it is advisable to conduct good research on your plan write it down to have it ready so in this case that what i did so i just copy pasted it and then uh, and check it to ensure that you have everything that you think should be included in the plan uh, usually the plan uh, depending on what your the, the instructor gives can include uh, client education follow-ups if there are a follow-up uh, pharmacological care uh, sometimes you are required to give the differential or maybe the test that you carried out then once you're done with that you give your references where you've conducted the research and then in this case there was also another exercise which I did and was right again so you just have to go through it check it and then proceed to the next and the last part which is a summary of the findings and as you can see